Greetings everyone and welcome back again. This time I'm going to show you how to control the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins remotely, the easy way. We'll be using a program called WebIOPi to control the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. So I'll show you how to install that first. If you don't know what the GPIO pins are, they're the Raspberry Pi's input and output pins. And the program will allow you to set and control the input or output of these pins via a web interface. So you can use any computer or smart device to control them. I'll also show you a quick demo of the program once it's installed. As I haven't done a video like this in a while and all the distributions have changed or have been updated, let's run this from the very beginning again. For those who have Raspbian or another operating system already installed, you can skip ahead. First thing is to grab the Linux distribution from raspberrypi.org's download section. So head over to this website and click direct download on the Raspbian Wheezy build. Click on this link to get to Win32 Disk Imager, which would allow you to write the OS to the SD card. Once downloaded, extract the OS image file from the zip file and run Win32 Disk Imager. Then browse to where you unzip the image file, select it and hit right. This will take about 5 minutes or so depending on the speed of your SD card and reader. Now put the SD card into the Pi and power it up. On the first boot you'll get these optional settings. We'll just exit for now and go straight to the command prompt. You'll need Python to run the program. So to get Python type the command sudo aptitude install python dev. You might not need to install Python on other Linux distributions, but you may as well run the command anyway, just in case you don't know if you have it or not. Now to get WebIOPi, use the wget command to get the code from googlecode.com. wget http colon slash slash webiopi.googlecode.com slash files slash webiopi dash 0 0.6.0 dot tar dot gz this is the latest version at the time of making this video, but you can just visit the website to check the latest version. Extract the file we just got using tar xvzf webiopi 0.6.0.tar.gz. Remember when typing in these few commands that caps do matter, so if it doesn't work first time, you probably haven't used the correct case letters. Now go to the directory just created using cd webiopi-0.6.0 and we're looking for a setup file so type dir to list the contents. There it is setup.sh Run this file with sudo dot slash setup dot sh this setup takes about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your internet connection speed. Don't worry, it's nowhere near as long as my emulation station setup, which took the best part of an entire day to download, compile and install. Feel free to go back and check out that video after this one. When it's installed, you should get this message. 
we'll just clear this screen here and jump back to the root. To start it, type sudo python -m web iopy 8000. This means that the server part of the web iopy will be running on router port 8000, but you can choose any free port you like. You should get this message. As you can see, it's running on my network at this address. To get to the HTTP web page and view it, all I have to do is type that address into any computer or smartphone's browser that's on the same network. Once you're there, you get these options on a front page. What we're interested in is this option. So click it and go through to the next page. Here you'll see a list of the pins on the Raspberry Pi. Pin 1 corresponds to the top left pin on the Pi. As you can see, it's pin 1 as it's labelled on the circuit board. Now all you have to do is choose the pin you want, say this one, set it to in or out, let's set this to out and try toggling it. I haven't got anything to put on the end of the pin so we'll just connect a multimeter so you can see the voltage output. The ground or common output pin will always be the same, it's pin 6. I've connected the negative meter lead to that then the positive one to the pin we're testing. Then I can press the button on the web page to turn the output on and off again. It's that simple. Let's try another one. Again I'll leave the negative meter lead on pin 6 and move the positive one to the pin I want to test. Set it to output again and toggle it on and off. There you have it, a simple way to use the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins over a network. Of course, if you set your router to forward port 8000 and get the Pi's external IP address, you can control the pins over the internet. Thanks for watching everyone.